Hi everyone and welcome to this lesson on triplets, dots and ties. So the first thing we're going to cover is the triplet which you'll see on your screen now. This is a set of quaver triplets. Now a triplet is three notes played in the time of two notes. So if I was to play a quaver triplet and over a beat, normal quavers would be bum 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 one and two and a triplet though is three of those played in the time of two of those so in that case it would be it's used a lot in sort of um, rock things that are in 12-8 and compound time which we'll go on to later it's also used as quite a cool effect in um, your jazz scale so all that kind of thing you know all those kind of things do sound quite cool of a triplet feel we've done a little bit before as well we've done it in the vibrato i've asked you to do things in threes and gone yeah 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 exactly the same that's all about triplets so on the screen now you'll see a group of triplets here this little rhythm we've got so at the beginning there we've got what our quaver triplets look like on the second beat you've just got a regular crotchet, on the third beat you've got another triplet and on the fourth beat you also have a normal crotchet. So what I want us to do is just get an idea of how we're going to count this. So what we do is exactly the same way as when we count quavers. So quavers are one and two, three and four and so on. Triplets, we're just going to say the word triplet so when we get in this feel we're thinking triplet 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 and that'll give us quaver triplets triplet 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 so if we go through exercise one now we've got triplet two triplet four basically so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace the tri with a the number of the beat that we're actually on just to make that a little bit easier so that first exercise, if we count through that together, we have triplet two, three alert four, one alert two alert three four, one two alert three alert four, one two three. Four. Okay, so that's actually our rhythm. What we're wanting to, what we're wanting to play. Um, see if you can actually play that rhythm along with me now. So we're going to play it to the note G. So we're abandoning the crook and we're going to actually play it on the sax. So we're live. So have a go at playing this together. So one a let two, three a let four, one a let two a let three four, one two a let three a let four one. Let's try it together nice and steady this is a bit of an awkward exercise and this video is all about just getting you introduced to them later on if you check the end of this stage you will find a booklet of exercises and um, studies that we can play together and you can listen to and get some practice at that but just for now let's have a play through it together so if you need another go at this because it's quite tricky and you're struggling for the rhythm well hit that repeat button hit that the skip back a little bit and i'll still be here waiting let's try it together here we go three four <laughs> So that's what that exercise sounds like then, that's that rhythm. Have a go at clapping it, have a go at speaking it through, but it's a very common rhythm. These triplets come up all the time and I don't want you to be seeing this music when you're out and about playing bits and bobs and thinking, oh, what's that? This is something that you need to know. Nice triplet idea. Okay, so we're going to turn that into a little uh, melody now to have a practice at. Again, it's early days, you might be struggling with this a little bit. Have a try at it, play it nice and slow, practice it away. I'll make sure the PDF's available so you can just download these exercises and have a go at them without having me rabbiting on the other side of you. So, the same rhythm, the second exercise is exactly the same rhythm, but this time with notes applied as well. So, let's play that together. What we'll do is I'll, I'll demo it first and then after this I'll go through the notes with you as it's early days and you might not be 100% sure of the note values. Here we go, three, four. <laughs> So 
So notice there how even at the end I'm carrying on through that note and I'm keeping blowing. I'm not cutting it short. I'm waiting for a full four counts before I stop playing. Okay, let's just have a practice of that together then. So that's the void, that's the actual rhythm. Let's have a go at playing the notes. So we have, if you don't want a spoiler of the notes and you want to do this on your own, switch me off. Uh, well, skip ahead a little bit, but here we go. Three, four. G, A, B, D with all the octave, with the octave key. G, A, B, E with the octave key and five fingers. D, C, B, C, B, A, G, C, D, D, B, A, C, B, A, F sharp, G, two, three, four. Okay, so hopefully you've got that idea, hopefully you've got that um, rhythm, have another go at it. I think that's quite tricky, this is quite early and if you've not done much note reading, you're really gonna struggle with this. So have another go, get your note reading up, brilliant practice either way. So on to number three then, now we're gonna talk about dots and ties. Now, we've already covered dots, what, do you remember what dots do? Hopefully that's right. Dots add half of the note's original value. So a two beat note, half of two is one, so that become a three beat note. So if you've got a minimum, a dot, and minimum, it becomes three beats. What we're going to cover today are dotted crotchets. So a crotchet is worth one beat. Put a dot on it and it becomes one and a half beats. So on your screen now you'll see the um, rhythm that we're going to have a look at. Right, let's check this out then. So we have a dot. A dot adds half of the original note value. So what we do is when we're writing this down, we think one, so that first rhythm there, it's gonna last for one beat. It's gonna cover the entire of the first beat, and then that note's also gonna cover half of the second beat too. Halfway through a beat, the second beat, what do we do? We've got a quaver there. That's coming halfway through. How do we represent that? Well, with an and. We remember that from the quavers, one and. So we've got one, two, and. Then you move on quickly to beat three. So that first bar, one, two, and three, four, and. One, two, and three, four, and. Next bar, easy peasy, you should be an expert at this by now. One, two, and three, four. The third bar, pretty much the same as the first, just with some funny business going on at the end. So we've got one, two, and again, three, Four. Now we've got that little tie. The tie is telling us to tie any notes that are attached by lines at the same pitch together. So there we go, last that fourth beat, hold that note on, hold on for one beat, that ties over to the first beat, meaning that it's just one note. We don't tongue that note on the, at the beginning of the fourth bar there. It's just held on. Then we've got the and, so it's tie and, Second beat's a quaver, isn't it? Quaver rest, that's on the two, halfway through, and. And again, the last two are tied together, so that's just one note. Bam, ba, re, four, and that's all one note. Okay, that one's a little bit complicated. Let's do that together slowly. So remember, just taking note here of which notes you're actually going to end up tonguing and which notes you're going to blow straight through. Any tied notes is just one note. We should only have one note and hold it on, but keep counting. All right, here we go. So the rhythm, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four, and two, and three, four. And I'm, my flowing at the end there is all to get you holding these notes on to make sure that you're not gonna play them again. Let's try that on the sax then, just on a G. Ready? Let's do this together. Three, four. <laughs> Okay, did you get something like that? Maybe you need some more practice at these, perhaps. Well, definitely get you some more practice at the end of the um, at the end of this stage to get this. You need to really see these notes quite often until they become um, second nature. 
Okay, so next up we've got exercise four. Exercise four is exactly the same as three. The only difference is, again, we've got some different note values to consider, some different um, letter names to consider. So let's play these different notes then. So let's just go through the notes first this time. And we'll have a little practice it, practice it together first, and then we'll play it together, see if you can get it straight away this time. So the notes are G, up to B, down to A, up to C. So that first bar, G, B, A, C. Try and finger this with me as we go. B, B, A, up to D with the octave key, you're six. Down and out into the third space. C, C, B, B, tied over, A, rest, G at the end. Let's do that together. Go over this bit again if you're struggling and it's a bit too quick. We'll do it nice and slow. Are we ready? Three, four. <laughs> So be careful of that ending. That ending is very, very tricky. It's on the what we call the offbeat, so it's on an un unaccented part of the bar, which is a little bit awkward. If you are struggling with these ties, a nice way to practice these is to omit them completely. So try and play these rhythms without the tie. So if I do the second two bars there without the tie, just to get the timing in my head as I count through, it sounds like this. <laughs> And then me actually blowing through the notes and playing them as ties and not hearing the second part of the tie each time. So you hear the difference there. So anytime you're struggling with a rhythm that has lots of ties in there, just try cutting out the tie for a while. Maybe that'll help you get to grips with where the beats are landing always counts, just like the numbers are written under here, that's what you should be thinking in your head, always counting. Thanks for watching guys, I shall catch you in the next video. As I've said before, if you're struggling on this kind of exercise, go to the end of this stage and have a little look at the PDF exercises that are available so you can practice this lot with um, a demo as well. All right, I shall catch you in the next video, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.